He's out of town. His grandson is graduating, so he's at his, his graduation ceremony. But I do want to recognize a couple of my other counselors who are here celebrating with us today. And it's Councilor Emma Pinter, who is here in the front. And Councilor Bruce Baker was here. I don't know if he's still around. But both of them were out here today to help celebrate this great day. Um, we're just we're sitting just, just south of Stanley Lake, which is a 2,300-acre regional park in Westminster. And we're working on a master plan that will guide improvements to Stanley Lake for years to come. We see Stanley Lake as a resource to preserve, to preserve while also activating this jewel for our citizens and the larger region. Now, the Greenway Trail not only connects the wildlife refu refuges and serves as a regional connection, it also provides a portion of the future planned loop trail around Stanley Lake, which is something our citizens have been asking for. So the trail also utilizes the Little Dry Creek Trail, which runs through South Westminster and adjacent to our new commuter rail station, which will be open opening at the end of July. Another round of applause for that. <laughs> and Westminster will be investing in amenities along the trail, including trailhead parking. We just opened a new parking lot on the north side of 100th Avenue. I feel like Mr. Pfeiffer dropped my papers. So. <laughs> Green Lake um, we're going to add signage, benches, picnic tables, a whole bunch of uh, new amenities to make it even more welcoming to residents who want to participate in the trail system. You know, but more importantly, we appreciate the partnership and the investments that have been made between the federal government, the state and local municipalities. We are very excited to open this new amenity for Westminster residents and the larger region. You know, in Westminster, our residents are incredibly, incredibly proud of our trail system and our open space system. We just had a citizen survey that that was the, what, the top of the list when he asked people what they're most proud of in Westminster was our trails and our open space. And that's why we are delighted that we can partner with so many intergovernmental agencies, so many of our surrounding jurisdictions to make our trail system even more better, not just for the residents of Westminster, but the residents of this entire region. And in conclusion, we have a wonderful program that's going to go on in the Stanley Lake Trails this summer, which is we're going to have some of these eggs that are going to be hidden around. They're going to be, it's a little Easter egg hunt going on all year. And you can, if you find them, you can turn them in for different prizes and you can soon keep the egg. <laughs> um, so this, this is something we're really excited about. We're going to be really promoting it all around social media and our staff asked me to present our first one to the governor. <laughs> so, so much. I think you could really see that, I mean, this is very hard work that we're talking about. It's taken a number of years, considerable vision, but you can see there is a sense of humor going on, and I was busting Bob's chops a, a minute ago about his long papers, but uh, Alberto's using like 10 or 12 font there on his. <laughs> hey, but he's young, that's right. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, and going on to, a, uh, on to my, my right, uh, it gives me uh, great pleasure to introduce, and, and for many of you, it's probably the first time you've met uh, uh, Dan Ash, who is our uh, director of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And I want to recognize Dan and his crew here, which there's many Fish and Wildlife Service uh, representatives here that have helped set up. And so I'll give a big shout out to, uh, to our colleagues there. And I also want to recognize that the Fish and Wildlife Service is one of the uh, several uh, really stalwart supporters nationally of American Hiking Society's National Trails Day. And, and Dan, I really want to thank you and your team uh, there for that. And I also just want to say something a little personal on, in terms of, uh, I've had the good fortune to work with, uh, with, with Dan as the director on a couple of things. And I remember one time we were together with Congressman Jim Moran helping put together the uh, uh, some brainstorming for the Potomac River Corridor to look at how recreation can uh, blend with the fish and wildlife refuges, the state parks, the county parks in Northern Virginia, all the way up to, uh, to the headwaters of the Potomac. What I want to say is uh, Director Ash, he does walk the walk when it comes to uh, this kind of partnership. So Dan, it's a real privilege to see you come out from Washington to join us. Thank you. What a beautiful day. And I'm happy to sit in the sun because it's been raining for like four weeks in Washington, D.C. <laughs> I want to say <laughs> I want to say thank you to uh, Ken Salazar. It's great to be sitting with him, and I, I would say it's an honor to be here today because this is this day is a product of a 
inspiring vision to connect the three national wildlife refuges here in the Denver area with their surrounding communities and to connect people with their public lands and with the great outdoors. And Ken Salazar has been, is, will continue to be a leader in that endeavor and it's great to be with him and with you here today. This idea of urban refuges and parks it is not just to pro provide an oasis uh, in the midst of our cities, it's vital for our health and well-being and the quality of life and the future of wildlife conservation. The Denver metropolitan area, home to more than 2.8 million people, they all deserve the opportunity to experience nature. And the trail that we're dedicating today is gonna connect these three incredible national wildlife refuges and then, uh, and then springboard to connection to Rocky Mountain National Park and provide people living in this area and people who come to visit uh, this area the opportunity to get out into the outdoors. The Rocky Mountain Arsenal National Wildlife Refuge, which is the anchor of this trail, is home to more than 330 species of animals, including bison, black-footed ferrets, deer, coyotes, bald eagles, and burrowing owls. The two ponds and Rocky Flats National Wildlife <coughs> Refuges are habitat for hundreds of species as well. I was up on the flats with Congressman Perlmutter this morning. We saw elk, we saw uh, raptors, owls, hawks, we saw native bees and butterflies, we saw hundreds of plants. Um, the Rocky Mountain Arsenal um, alone has hosted uh, over 200,000 visitors this year and it's uh, with the investments like this trail it is on pace to host over a million visitors a year and be one of the most visited national wildlife refuges in the country um, and as our country becomes more urban more urbanized more people living in the urban environment it's important for us to give these opportunities for urban residents to get outside because that growing disconnect is a, a great concern to an organization like the u.s fish and wildlife service because if today's children are growing up disconnected from nature and from open spaces and who is going to work to preserve and protect those open spaces tomorrow. So that's why this day is so important to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and it's important for us to recreate uh, this, um, this uh, momentum and these ideas in other uh, great urban places across the nation, connecting communities to national wildlife refuges and other open spaces. So we're proud to join with you. We're proud to be a great partner and I want to say thanks to all of our employees who have made this possible and again thank you uh, to all of you for the opportunity to join with you here today. Gives me great honor to uh, introduce Sherry Shafflin who is from the Federal Highway Administration part of the Department of Transportation and I wanted to just take a, a second here to, to recognize, uh, and I think many of you may not be aware, just how important and influential the Federal Highway Administration is to support our trails in, the, in, in America. Um, the Recreation Trails Program, uh, which is, I'm just a stalwart champion of, is, is one of the most important for connecting underserved populations to connecting urban communities to uh, more wildlands and and this is something that's very important. And the Federal Highway Administration has been a long-standing uh, sponsor and supporter of National Trails Day uh, for a number of years. So Sherry, it's, it's really a thrill to see you here. And uh, share some remarks. Uh, Dan, I think it's appropriate to have the wildlife side of thing and then have the Director of Human Environment try to leap to it. So let me do that for just a second here. Uh, my program has responsibilities for the uh, Transportation Alternative Program, which includes a Recreational Trails Program, as well as coordinating all the bicycle and pedestrian activities for USDOT. Uh, we also bring together uh, environmental justice, economic development, reconnecting communities that have been bifur uh, bifurcated by previous transportation investments, and context-sensitive solutions that in aggregate bringing those together to help communities uh, have a more livable and uh, a more livable society and a more higher quality of life. 
and so that the transportation dollars are supporting that. And I think you heard the local government representatives talk about that. I'm here on behalf of the Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox and Federal Highway Administrator Greg Nadeau to celebrate this important link to the Denver region's non-motorized transportation network. We are very proud to participate in National Trails Day and we have been doing so and providing resources since 1999. And so we really appreciate this partnership, Greg, to really bring trails to you know, all of America. Secretary Fox promotes the concept of ladders of opportunity where everybody has access to our transportation system and the ability to get where they need to go. He is leading the national dialogue on how to use innovation to have multimodal transportation system that provides people with safe, reliable, and affordable connections to jobs and other essential services. Through the Safer People, Safer Streets initiative, over 240 city mayors are actively working to increase the, and improve their pedestrian and bicycle networks for mobility as well as recreation. This trail project is a, a great example of the Federal Highway and USDOT place-based initiatives that focus on ladders of opportunity by building transportation infra infrastructure that improves community connectivity and cohesion. This trail provides outstanding recreational opportunities, but also connects communities, providing access between homes, businesses, schools, commercial areas, transit station, and recreational areas, all without having to use a private vehicle. This trail closed gaps and completed links and community trail networks. It is a great example of how we can integrate transportation and recreation where appropriate and provide uh, opportunities for all to travel safely and in a healthy manner. This trail also supports the broader goals for regional trail networks. As these regional trails interconnect, you'll be able to get around the area on foot or bike with less conflict with motor vehicles and enjoy scenery at the same time. And if we're going to reduce the congestion in and within and around our national park and recreation areas, we've got to figure out how to reduce those short trips through using bike and pedestrian uh, better access. I'm also proud of this project because the Greenway Trail is an excellent example of interagency coordination. It represents a long-standing relationship between DOT and the Department of Interior to balance the effort to provide safe transportation and protect and conserve the, resor the natural, cultural, and historic resources that make up our public lands. The Rocky Mountain Greenway Steering Committee is overseeing a massive undertaking. David Lucas and Jenny Brannon, as co-chairs, thank you for your leadership and efforts. Congratulations on this section, and we look forward to working with you on the next section to the Boulder Open Space via Rocky Flat National Wildlife Refuge. Construction of the seven-mile segment began early this year, and approximately 20 uh, staff, a mix of federal lands staff as well as folks from Atkins Company, uh, worked hard to build this trail and design it. In particular, I'd like to recognize Central Federal Lands Project Manager Julian Mascaroni, if he could stand. and project engineer, engineer Jonathan Giraldo for guiding the construction team that built the trail. Jonathan's not with us today, but we acknowledge his uh, efforts to help here. In addition, I'd like to thank Elijah Henley. Elijah, if you'd stand, he's our planning team leader. He brings amazing convening and collaboration skills to everything that he does to make these kinds of projects happen for central federal, federal lands. A combination, people mention they like our money. Let me talk about that a minute. <laughs> a combination of sources through our Federal Lands Highway Program were used to fund the planning and construction of the trail, including the Refuge Road Program, Transit in the Parks Program, and Public Lands Highway Discretionary and Planning Funds. These programs support partnerships with the Federal Land Management Agencies to provide access to and within Federal lands. The Greenway Trail also connects to other community trails, many of which have used other federal aid highway program funds, including the Recreational Trails Program Funds, 
transportation enhancement and transportation alternatives. As we connect these trails with sidewalks, separated bike lanes, and streets that provide low stress options, we are developing an interconnected network providing access for everyone. My office has produced many resources this past year to promote safe, comfortable, interconnected pedestrian bicycle networks. These products aid with planning, mapping, designing, and evaluating performance in both urban and rural contexts for all users and all abilities. Our federal lands division offices and our, and our division offices are your entree to accessing technical assistance and information on funding strategies. Um, I want to thank you all for allowing me to participate today. And uh, I'm looking forward to the bike ride. I bike to work in D.C. every day, but I'm not sure how the elevation is going to affect my abilities here. So uh, I'll give it my best shot. Thank you very much. Very terrific. I think everybody can see.